Hello， 你好，欢迎回来。Welcome back to Wisdom Wednesday with Johnny Tiger on December first, twenty twenty one. Without counting human, do you know what is the deadliest animal in the world? The one animal that is responsible for more human death than anything else. About seventy years ago, in 1950,、uh, there was an interesting incident that happened in Beijing, China. That is worth starting this episode with. In Beijing, China, there is the, this very old heritage building called a Gu Lou. The Gu Lou building was a very symbolic, a very old, very valuable to the local people. Um, as our story opens, this was a bright, warm, cheerful, sunny day in Beijing, China, in the midst of summer. And just as the sun was setting, suddenly, out of nowhere, a plume of thick black smoke could be seen rising off the roof of the Gu Lou building. And Of course, this had the local people concerned. They thought the building was on fire, and this was such a symbolic building that if it burned down, it would be devastating for the local people. So many people made phone calls to the fire station, and firefighters came in huge numbers, surrounding the building, setting up the equipment, and storming the building, running up to the top, looking for the fire. To their surprise, they did not find any fire in the building. Now, if it was just one report, then it could be put down as a prank or a hoax. But there were so many reports that there was no way to dismiss it. But there was no fire, so everyone could just put it up to well, maybe some kind of freak nature event, and they went home. But next day. Just as the sun was about to set, the same thing happened. Thick black smoke drifted up out of the roof of the Gu Lou building, and again, people called the fire station. The firemen showed up to put out the fire, and wasn't there. This kept up every day for the next two weeks. Now, Chinese people have always been very superstitious and creative, imaginative, and very religious. So. When there's smoke rising off the top of the building every night for no apparent reason, people started to tell stories. Next thing you know, there were stories、uh, anywhere between demonic invasion or haunted、uh, ghost apparition or a message from the god about our sinful ways. People had all kind of supernatural. Uh, explanations. Meanwhile, the firefighters had enough of this nonsense, so they reported this to the local、uh, scientific community, hoping that someone would investigate it.、Uh, it took them almost a month, but finally, the scientists came back with a result that made everyone drop their jaw. Did you know that yellow? Light, yellow-colored light, turns mosquitoes on. Now I'm not even talking figuratively. When male and female mosquitoes are about to mate, they mate better, and they are more eager, more excited, if they have、uh, yellow-colored light near them. The yellow light is literally Viagra for the mosquitoes. It just happened that particular year in Beijing, China, they have been doing a lot of excavating and draining of ditches and swampland. So there's a lot of shallow pool of water here and there still needed to be sorted out. Perfect environment for mosquitoes, and just happened the mosaic tiles on the roof of the Gu Lou building. When reflecting the ray of the setting sun, 
cast off a strong yellow light. This yellow light was like a call to orgy for mosquitoes from miles around, and that was the source of the black cloud or smoke-like apparition people saw on the roof of the building. That's how many mosquitoes there were to mating、uh, near the roof of the Gulo building. My parents. Uh, they live in Taiwan. I myself grew up in Taiwan, so mosquito is no stranger to me, and I definitely hate those little buggers. When I went back to Taiwan in uh, uh, 2012 to visit my parents, I got bit so bad by mosquitoes that when I came back to Canada, I couldn't wear short sleeve for almost a month. My Arms looked like corn on the cob. There were so many bumps on my arms that they they looked like two cobs of corn. That's how disgusting it was. Just yesterday, I got a call from my mom, and my mom was all in a huff and pissed off. And my mom said, "Do you know what your dad do? What, what do you know what your dad done? Now, because my dad has dementia, so." Honestly, at this point, nothing he does would surprise me. So I said, "Oh, okay, okay, calm down. What did he do now?" It turned out, my dad decided that the house is too hot, and it's too hot because the screens on the windows do not allow enough air to circulate. So when my mom wasn't home, my dad decided to take upon himself to take. Uh, an exacto knife and cut out all the screens on the window. So now、uh, they do get better air circulation, but my mom said the house, washroom, kitchen, even inside the toilet, full of mosquitoes. Incidentally, mosquito in Mandarin is called wenzi. Wenzi, W O O N J E, wenzi. So where did wenzi come from? How long have they been around? Well, scientifically, I don't think we know where they came from. But as far as we can tell, the oldest fossil evidence of a wenzi of a mosquito. It's from about 70 million years ago. Back then, wenzi were about as big as a dragonfly, and the part of their mouth that would、uh, suck your blood、uh, were about the same size as the tip of a syringe. Ouch! You imagine getting bitten by one of those suckers. Good thing they're no longer that big.、Uh, now. Chinese people, we do have a、uh, our own folklore of the origin origin of wenzi, origin of mosquitoes. I think it's an interesting little tale、uh, that I want to share with you guys. The story goes that about five thousand years ago, there was a massive、uh, supernatural war called the God War,、uh, where on both sides there were demons and gods and human warriors and heroes. And you can think of it like the Chinese version of the Trojan War.、Right? It was really big,、uh, very fierce, very brutal, very bloody. A lot of people, a lot of deities died during the God War.、Okay? Uh, when we have time, I、uh, will talk more about that. But during the God War, one of the uh, uh, demons from the villains, the evil side.、Uh, I mean. There's really no evil side. Both sides have their own reason and uh, uh, ideal. But you know, just for the sake of e- easier to tell the story, we'll call the、uh, losing side the evil, evil side. So、uh, one of the demon, a、uh, big demonic turtle from the evil side, was captured by none other than Buddha himself.、Uh, now. Because the turtle, a demon, was not all bad.、Uh, she was a, a 
she did some evil thing, but she also had some good quality. So Buddha didn't want to uh, uh, slay her uh, or uh, kill her or destroy her on the spot. So Buddha, being very merciful, decided to uh, take her back to heaven and put her in jail for a while. Maybe she would repent her way. But Buddha was very busy. Buddha had to stick around to fight the war and restore order and protect the innocent and all that cool stuff. The Buddha couldn't personally escort the uh, turtle demon back to heaven. So Buddha summoned uh, the, the fastest, the brightest of her disciples uh, and told the disciple, I want you to escort the turtle here back to heaven and put her in jail. Make sure she's treated good and uh, make sure she has enough time to repent her way. Uh, and before you go, here is a chest of holding I want you to bring back to heaven and leave it there for safekeeping as well. The disciple said, uh, what, what is this, Master? What is the chest of holding? Uh, the Buddha said, well, as you can see, this is a small wooden chest. Uh, small enough and light enough you can carry it in your arm. But this is a magical chest. It can hold anything, any size. Uh, you can put an elephant in it and it would fit the elephant, it will fit inside, and it will not increase the weight of the chest. The chest will always be light enough for you to carry. Oh, the disciple was very impressed and said, okay, master, I'll take this back to the headquarter and make sure it's uh, kept safe. Uh, and so the disciple and the turtle demon set out towards heaven. Now the, the road from the mortal world to heaven was very, 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 very long. But normally, normally the disciple with his uh, superhuman speed could make the journey in three days. But, well, as we know, turtles don't run very fast. Even when they are turtle demons, they still have their limits. Uh, so, because the disciple had to keep up, or a sl slow down, uh, allow the turtle demon to keep up. They were still on the road three months later and not even halfway there yet. One day the disciple finally had enough of it and he said, oh, I've been an idiot. Here I have this chest of, of holding. My master said you can put anything in there. Why don't I just put the turtle in? I will open the chest, and turtle, you can crawl into the chest, and I'll carry you, and we can be at, in heaven for our supper by sundown. Unfortunately, the Buddha um, was a little bit distracted by the war, and did not tell his disciple not to open the chest, because there were already something, or rather several things inside the chest. It turned out that there was an entire army of vampires captured by Buddha and uh, stuffed inside the chest. And that's why Buddha wanted the disciple to take the chest back to heaven so someone can uh, keep it safe. Well, disciple didn't know about this part of the plan, so he opened the chest, thinking he was going to put a turtle in there. As soon as the chest opened, a whole army of very hungry, very pissed off vampire came storming out of the chest, and, well, the disciple definitely didn't uh, prepare for this, and wasn't uh, going to hang around, being get, get eaten, so the disciple used his superhuman speed, hightailed out of there, leaving the turtle demon to be devoured by the vampires. Even though the vampires drained the turtle demon of her blood and killed her, this is a very strong demon we're talking about. I mean, this demon required Buddha himself to tame, to capture. So it's not just any ordinary turtle or any ordinary demon. This was like a master, an arch, arch class, like super high class demon. So 
This vampire, after devouring the blood of this turtle demon, suddenly disintegrated because of the power in the blood that caused the vampires to disintegrate into millions and millions and millions of tiny fragments and drift away on the wind. And those tiny fragments of vampire became mosquitoes. So you see, the reason we have mosquitoes and all the diseases that's associated with them, uh, it's all because of a miscommunication between Buddha and his disciple. <laughs> um, of course, that, that's just a folklore, and, uh, but it, it, it's an interesting one nonetheless. How about a real historical account? In around uh, 1700, the Chinese Emperor Kangxi uh, contracted malaria. Now, Kangxi was very unfortunate. Uh, being an emperor, he had the best of everything and the cleanest of the environment to live in. Uh, so, he had never gotten uh, bitten by a mosquito in his whole life. But wouldn't you know it, the first time he got nailed by a mosquito, he caught malaria. Very serious business. And there was no treatment for malaria in China at the time. It wasn't until a pair of French missionaries that uh, was spreading the gospel in China heard about the emperor's ailment and came to the palace with a treatment called quinine. Uh, quinine is a powder extracted from the bark of the cinchona tree found in Peru. Uh, and this saved the emperor's life, this quinine medication. Uh, the emperor was so pleased and so thankful that he opened up China for white people, uh, Westerners, to come trade and study and spread gospel. Little did the emperor know that the discovery of quinine really can't be credited to white people or Westerners. The cinchona trees where the quinine medicine was extracted from was native to Peru. The Peruvian Aborigines, native people, Indian people in Peru, have known about the miraculous power of this medicine for hundreds and hundreds of years prior to that. But the native people regarded this as one of their most valued secrets. Anyone who was said to give the secret away was going to be put to death by the chief and the witch doctors. How this uh, medicine finally was became known to Westerners was kind of a ironic and sad tale. Uh, it was somewhere around 17th century when the Countess of Manu, Peru, uh, the then wife of the vice Spanish Viceroy of Peru, contracted malaria. And there was no treatment for it. The priest, the doctor, no one knew what this mysterious disease was. Luckily for the Countess, that she has always been very, very kind, very generous to the servants. And among the servants was a Peruvian Aborigine woman who knew about the treatment, how to treat malaria. So this servant woman uh, brought the tea made from uh, the bark of the Sakona tree. And offered it to the Countess, and this ended up curing the Countess of her malaria. Rather than thanking the servant woman, uh, rather than rewarding her for curing his wife, the Viceroy, uh, the Spanish Viceroy, saw that this was a chance for him to discover something wonderful and great. 
So he had this woman arrested and tortured until she finally gave him the recipe on how to make the quinine medicine. And that's how the Westerners finally came to knowledge of how to extract quinine from、uh, the Sakona tree and how it saved so many people、uh, from this crazy. Deadly disease that we know as malaria. And here's a little interesting uh, uh, trivia. When I was little, and I read、uh, a lot of historical、uh, fictions and nonfiction, talking about the wars and politics and. Uh, 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 heroes and heroines of ancient Chinese days, and there was always a mention whenever the、uh, warriors had to journey to southern China. Back then, southern China was mostly covered in、uh, very thick,、uh, very ancient uh, tropical uh, jungle and trees and plants. It was basically a giant jungle, southern China. Uh, and warriors talked about that region of China with dread in their heart. And one of the things that always got mentioned was something called Zhang Qi. Zhang Qi. It was said that if you get come in contact with Zhang Qi, you will get poisoned and die. Zhang Qi was always described to be this. Thick black cloud that hang close to the ground. That if you walk into it, you will disappear, and then when you appear again, you will be poisoned. And if you don't die right there and then, you will die shortly after. Now, for many many years, many people have been trying to figure out, okay, what is what exactly is this Zhang Qi mentioned in、uh, history novels and books? Uh, and the most common, even though mistaken, explanation was, well, you know, in the tropical jungle, there's a lot of decaying corpses and plants and poisonous spiders and poisonous snakes. So all this poison and venom and、uh, decaying gas will mix together and form this. A noxious poison cloud that will poison you if you walk into it. Sound good. Sound sound like a good explanation, but pure nonsense, of course. We have not nothing like that work in nature. You know, you, if there's really that much concentration of gas and venom and decaying matter,、uh, a bit of rain, a bit of wind would quickly take care of that. But it's not until much later, much more recent, that scientists and historians finally came to the conclusion: this cloud, this Zhang Qi, not a cloud at all, not not it's not a poisonous gas. It was the amount of mosquito that was found in the tropical jungle, especially near swamps and marshes, and.、Um, As we already said in in the Gulo incident in Beijing, China, when you get enough mosquitoes gathering in one place, they look like a thick black cloud of smoke. So can you imagine coming across that in the jungle? I guess to people back then who didn't know what they were running into, this would have been horrifying. And of course, you walk into that cloud, you're going to get stinged and、uh, bitten so many times. That it's almost certain that you're going to catch some deadly disease that will kill you. So Zhang Qi existed,、uh, but wasn't a, some kind of mystical, crazy,、uh, poisonous cloud. It was just many, many, many mosquitoes. Interestingly enough, this was reflected in Western. Uh, language in the English language as well. The word malaria 
one of the deadliest diseases passed around by mosquitoes, is made up of two medieval Italian words, the word mala, which means bad or evil, and an area, which means air. So it looked like back then, the medieval Italian people call uh, this crazy disease passed on by mosquitoes bad or evil air, while Chinese people called it zhang qi, but they were basically talking about the same thing. The world sometimes is a small place indeed, and it's crazy to think how we as human beings still can't find a way to coexist and get along, even though our culture, languages, and things that happened to us in the past are really very often quite similar.